Next up on Collective Radio, No Punk Intended. No! episode of No Punk Intended. If you're tuned into the broadcast on Collective Radio on the 3rd of May, this is a one-off episode. The others run for four weeks on repeat, but not this one. And we'll be on to a new show next week, so listen up. I want your attention. As you know by now, the remit of No Punk Intended is to explore the edges of punk music, where it bleeds into or clashes with other forms of music in a sort of vain attempt to chart the limits of what punk is or is not. And we never really answer that question. That's the whole thing, right? Last week we had a slice of ska punk and you might remember me complaining about how difficult it was to put that episode together because just because there's so much ska punk out there. It's too much choice. I was also keen to include some of my favourite local ska punk bands from Ireland and especially Ulster and Belfast but when I tried to cram all those things together 
uh, the show it just didn't hang together. So this is the solution. A bonus episode solely focused on ska punk from Ireland. I say it that way deliberately, ska punk from Ireland instead of Irish ska punk, uh, because I don't want you to think that this is some kind of Celtic ska crossover. It's nothing as twee and trite as that, you'll be relieved to hear. Uh, Every now and again, on No Punk Intended, I slip into a little bit of self-indulgence with my track choices. Uh, And this entire show, pretty much, is pure self-indulgence. But uh, it's a bonus episode, right? So all the rules can go out the window. With the exception of two tracks from either end of the 1980s, this episode is focused on ska punk bands of the 2000s and 2010s, hitting as recent as 2020. And they're mostly Belfast based. But I think that's okay. Ska punk has been a big fat thread in the Belfast punk scene, especially in the 21st century. Uh, And it's an aspect that I don't think is really acknowledged properly. Um, Maybe because ska punk is still sort of uncool. And yes, that's still the fault of Goldfinger. And so, at the top of the show, it was Pocket Billiards with their anthem, Belfast Town. This is from the 2009 self-titled album. There's an earlier version on the EP Outlook Not So Good, which was 2005, uh, but that was a pretty thin recording. Uh, And the 2009 version has me on drums, so there's some extra self-indulgence for you. (laughs) Uh, Pocket Billiards formed in 2001, and I still don't think they've killed the band off yet, even if the gigs are few and far between these days. Uh, They've been a nine and ten piece band during that time with loads of big brass drive, as you could hear there. Uh, I always thought the uh, chorus lyric in this one was, they fuck you up and they fuck you down. That's the way things go in Belfast town. But uh, it's actually, apparently, build you up and break you down. Uh, I thought Savage, the vocalist, was self-censoring the words when we uh, recorded this version, but he says it was always that way. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it up to you, dear listener, uh, to decide whether my Mondegreen misheard lyric was, was actually better. Anyway, let's move it along. It's not all Belfast in this episode. Uh, let's take a little trek around the rest of the island now. We'll call past Dublin and Ballina County Mayo, but first we'll go down the east coast to Drogheda and back to 1989 or so with Trench Town and Moving Targets. Gah! Something that they never understand 
destruction Causing destruction Was section four there trying to catch me out with that final note i think that song was in no fit state from the 2013 album of the same name section four hail from the little town of balana on the north coast of county mayo and for whatever reason balana is just one of those places that has an unexpectedly high number of punks pouring forth from it uh, and more power to them uh, before that, we had a live recording of Dropping Bombs from Dublin doing the leftover crack song Gang Control in the Voodoo Lounge there, which is actually by the banks of the River Liffey. I remember the guy who did uh, sound at Voodoo Lounge used to record all the bands that played onto uh, a mini disc. And then at the end of the gig, he'd try and sell you this uh, mini disc recording of your set, which seemed like extortion of some kind at the time. But it does mean we can listen back years later uh, to this stuff. Um, the version I found of this online was uploaded in 2010, but I've got to think this was a few years earlier, partly because Rose's voice sounds younger in the uh, between song banter there, um, but also because Dropping Bombs really moved away from playing ska punk or ska core by this point, and they firmly immersed themselves in that kind of epic D-beat stuff full of the gnarly syncopated breakdowns. Um, this is a band that has come back from the dead this year with a new album out on Distro Y and some gigs, I believe. I will be petitioning for this leftover crack cover to be resurrected as well. Uh, you might recall the last episode I actually avoided playing any choking victim leftover crack star fucking hipsters. Um, so I hope that playing this cover version doesn't make me a complete hypocrite. But uh, let's get back to Belfast anyway. Next up is Decoy 47 with Stay Pretty from 2002 or maybe 2003. No one seems to have an exact recollection of when it was, but I think that's roughly it. Uh, Decoy 47 played a sort of hybrid of ska and psychobilly and punk. Um, uh, and like a lot of Belfast bands, they weren't actually all from Belfast, more like Lurgan and Balamoney in this case. As the biggest city in Ulster, Belfast tends to suck creative people in before chewing them up and spitting them back out, usually. And from my chip-on-the-shoulder culture perspective, it's, uh, it's a cultural black hole in a lot of ways. And as much as I love Belfast, I do sort of resent it as well for that reason. But there's no denying the vibrancy of the punk that comes from all that. And here's an example then. It's uh, Decoy 47.
when you're near the edge You always sense there's something wrong But you ignore it Get a carry out To your blood rings by this point Your nightly prescription Make a new friend From a foreign land With stupid news like dick Mario I can't help but be blind You spend it all trying to find your friends Lost in the street You finally get your cheesy chip And find this guy's a creep Cause it's a cocktail A social awkwardness that thought I'd pass you by Yeah, that was your conscience Cause it's a cocktail Of your own stupidity I broke a table at Cromwell And a system that is free It's four o'clock night And this party's reached its peak People begging you for drugs I think it's time to leave Say your phone farewell to the guys who never leave Make up running down their fists A lovely sight to see And a party up into the house One street down I know and what this night to hold It's a cocktail Of social awkwardness The thoughts are passing by Yet I was your conscience Yes, it's a cocktail Of your own Broken table and Cromwell And a sister that is free Cause it's a cocktail A social cocktail Yes, it's a cocktail Decoy 47 were followed there by The Assailants with Social Cocktail from their 2011 EP, which was the only thing they ever released, as far as I'm aware. I remember how sharp and on the nose this song was at the time. Uh, They're singing here about the various substances and and behaviours that affected portions of the punk scene during those years, especially drugs like ketamine. Fads would come and go for particular things, but I remember parties after gigs and people would just be sitting around in a K-hole. And I think the assailants even kind of managed to make this song sound like that. Um, and it's not celebratory by any means. They're pointing out how shit people are in that state. It's not preachy, though, I wouldn't say. Uh, and the band weren't straight edge or anything like that. Uh, but compared to the reams of songs celebrating drugs and especially drink... In Belfast Punk, this assailant song stands out as something refreshingly honest. The Scallions are a contemporary band keeping the Belfast ska punk flag flying. This next song is their cover of the Run and Riot song, Johnny Reggae. Run and Riot themselves were an excellent oi band from Belfast, formed in the late 1990s. Uh, this year will actually mark 10 years since Colin Riot's untimely death, and he's much missed. The Scallions take Johnny Reggae and give it a brassy ska punk makeover, as you'll hear. This is from their 2020 album, Scallion Battalion. Uh, I remember it coming out during the first Covid lockdown. It was a rare spark of creative output during that time. Uh, And I think a mark of real tenacity by the band to persevere with that release, despite everything that was going on around them. I think people really, uh, really appreciated that. We'll follow the Scallions with 29 Years by Aggressors BC from the 2013 album, The Tone of the Times. Marty from Aggressors was a long-time member of Run and Riot, uh, actually, as Dan Horst was as well, the drummer. I think with so many ska punk and other sorts of bands coming out of Belfast, it probably makes the scene seem absolutely enormous if you're just listing off the number of bands, but there's a lot of cross-band incestuousness and sharing of members going on too. Sharing of members. Uh, That came out a bit more sordid than I meant it to. Uh, Sorry, Uh, let's just move on.
Aggressors BC there, uh, doubly self-indulgent with that one actually for me. Uh, aggressors were our wedding band ten years ago. I shit you not. And for you no punk intended super fans, you'll have clocked that the drum roll at the start of that song is sampled in the jingle for this show. Here, if you missed it, I'll show you. So here's aggressors and the no punk intended jingle. Next up on Collective Radio, no punk intended. No. There you have it. You won't be able to unhear that now. My chat about hypocrisy earlier was actually a subtle foreshadowing to our next song. That's right. The show also features literary devices. The Hypocrites started life in 2005, I think, featuring ex-members of Mr Nipples and the Dangleberries and Half Cut. I wish I could have dug out some half-cut, actually. Not just to embarrass Kevin Salters. It was actually good. It was proper Operation Ivy worship. uh, Early ranted stuff in in the best way possible. Um, Social Outcasts were another early 2000s ska punk band that might have made the track list here. Um, They went on to form an emo band when that became the next trend, I suppose. Um, Loads and loads of other bands included the odd ska punk flourish, especially in the early 2000s. Even the crusty D-beat band Stillbirth had a ska-punk breakdown in their song Smash Both States, if you can imagine that. Uh, big up the Comber Punks while I'm at it. Another replace of Shed Loads of Punks. I'll, uh, I'll play a little excerpt from that, shall I? Here we go. This is the ska breakdown in the middle of the D-beat song Smash Both States by Stillbirth. There's a big focus on 21st century bands here, as I've noted, and that makes sense with the wave of ska punk, third wave ska, are we calling it, coming over from the US in particular at that time. But uh, older anarcho bands like Sledgehammer from the 1980s threw in some ska too in a kind of uh, slits vibe, I suppose. I have some Sledgehammer songs on file here, but whoever ripped the music from the old cassette tape did a really crap job, and the tape was running too fast, so everyone sounds like Mickey Mouse or something. It's ridiculous. Um, There's a better tape out there somewhere, I'm told, so drop me a line if you have it. But anyway, The Hypocrites featured Joe D and Kev Hatt from Mr Nipples. The Sloaner Brothers are in the mix too, Barney on vocals of course, and Kev as I mentioned. Um, The song after this one by Thousand Drunken Nights also features ex-Mr Nipples members Darzo and Marty. That's the same Marty from Run Riot and Aggressors BC. It's all just one big band at the end of the day, isn't it? I remember some of the bad feeling between the hypocrites and Thousand Drunken Nights in the mid to late 2000s, which was all a result of the breakup of Mr Nipples and the Dangleberries. And uh, I think that's what the Pocket Billiards song was about at the top of the show. Um, The vibrancy of the scene also came with so much bitching, as Savage sings it in the Pocket Billiards song. And the scene was just big enough to include some antagonistic splits here and there. It's all par for the course, I suppose. But uh, to wash away all those years of hurt, I'll play them back to back here. 
So next, it's The Hypocrites with number one from 2006, or was it seven? Uh, followed with Thousand Drunken Nights, Stagnant from Blank Check for Peace from 2010. <laughs>
Times the Great Healer, eh? Actually, I think uh, some people are still harbouring grudges two decades later, to be honest with you. But uh, let's not descend into some sort of gossipy tell-all radio show here. I'll save that for another bonus episode. Uh, Back to the task at hand. The next song is one you probably haven't heard before, and if you have heard it, you probably haven't heard it for 20 years. It's STUNT, which was an acronym for Skin That Up and Took, I believe. Uh, playing some Capdown-esque ska core with the song Minority. I think this is from 2003. It's on a two-song home-burned CD-R with a printed sheet and a plastic sleeve and there's no date anywhere on it. Uh, their EP, uh, Don't Try This at Home, was 2004, so I'm thinking this was the year before. I don't know how many copies of this they burned, but I'm guessing this is a bit of a rarity by now. Uh, maybe I should get up on Discogs and sell it for an exorbitant price. Does an enormous stack of 20-year-old CDR seem like a viable pension plan to you? Does it? <laughs> Four members of Stunt were eventually absorbed into Pocket Billiards. Sticky joined on keys, Slow and D um, joined Elaine and Joe in the brass section, and later Dempsey joined on drums. I told you it was an incestuous little scene. But here they are in all their glory. This is Stunt with Minority. <laughs>
excellent stuff. We're down to the last tune of this bonus episode. Thank you for permitting me to wallow in my self-indulgence for an entire hour. Uh, well, maybe you switched off 45 minutes ago. I'll never know. Uh, I think I may even have come slightly to uh, nostalgia with this track list. And I always complain bitterly about nostalgia when other people do it, don't I? Well, as I said, this is a bonus episode, so I can break my own rules as I please. Next week, we'll return to business as usual with an episode about punk rap. That'll be an exciting one to put together. I hope you'll be excited to hear it too. But let's think back over these ska punk episodes for a minute. If you remember the main ska punk episode, I ended up name checking more than 50 bands in addition to the 12 that I actually played. And we can add to that the 12 bands here, plus the more that I've mentioned on top. And I think that's testament to the enormity of ska punk as a subgenre. And it's surprisingly diverse. Now, you know and I know that the whole point of No Punk Intended is not to actually answer the question, but let's ask it anyway. What is ska punk? The last song of episode four was a special song. Uh, fittingly enough, and the last song here will be a specials cover, actually. We got that two-tone sound again with Trench Town earlier in this episode, and I suppose actually the Scallions a bit as well in this episode, very kind of uh, madness-inspired. But ska punk isn't just that. It's also laid back and soulful, or spaced out with dubbiness. It's also distorted and raw, it's also metallic and brass driven, it's party music, it's protest music, it's music to relax with. If two-tone was a kind of injection of punk energy into the ska of the 1960s, the subsequent interpretations of ska punk have taken that hybrid into all sorts of different soundscapes. As usual, I think the final analysis has to be that trying to squeeze a narrow delineation around anything punk is a lot of wasted effort. And uh, that's what I've been saying all along. But even if we can't define what punk is or find a clear line between where punk exists as a separate entity from another subgenre, we still get to have a lot of fun thinking about it and uh, trying to dive into the messiness at the edges of punk. I'm not giving you any answers, but uh, I hope you're enjoying listening to it anyway. Usually for the last song of a show, I try to play something really excellent or fantastically interesting. This one I'm feeling less excited about, to be honest. It's a Stiff Little Fingers cover of the specials. It doesn't make it all right. Uh, It was included on SLF's Nobody's Heroes album of 1980. Um, after they sold out to Chrysalis and all that. It's pretty naff, to be honest. Um, Sort of gets going towards the end. Uh, SLF had a few kind of scan flexions on inflammable material. Uh, I suppose that dirgy Johnny Was track is probably the clearest example of that. And I I do actually like a lot of Stiff Little Fingers music, but even their biggest fans would have to admit they're a a second-rate clash. And I think their forays into scan reggae come off even worse than when the Ruts tried to do it. So it's with a bit of a nonplussed shrug that I sign off for this show. Uh, if you get bored, feel free to switch off early. I probably will. We'll see you next week for some punk rap. But uh, to end this one, it's Stiff Little Fingers with their cover of It Doesn't Make It All Right by The Specials. And see you next time. <laughs> It doesn't make it all right It doesn't make it all right
Doesn't make it all right. 